Welcome to Career Tipper Podcast, hosted by Michelle Beatty. The Career Tipper Podcast is a motivational resource that shares career and entrepreneurial tips by industry experts that will help amazing people evolve to their professional best. And now your host, Michelle Beatty. Episode 52 of the Career Tipper Podcast features Dr. Roshana Novellis. Roshana is the founder and CEO of Enrich Her, a financial technology platform with regulatory approval to help women secure funding to grow their ventures. Enrich Her is disrupting traditional and predatory lending terms through its credit model and lending environment. Enrich Her's investment platform is fueling the growth of women businesses by enabling female founders to secure capital in an affordable and non-dilutive way. Dr. Novellis is a gender equality advocate who believes in economic empowerment and inclusive economic growth. Roshana served on the Commission on Women for the City of Atlanta and was honored as one of the women who means business by the Atlanta Business Chronicle one of the 40 under 40 by Georgia Trend, and as a Halcyon Fellow for Social Impact. During this episode, Dr. Novellis will share insight on building ecosystems that help women get funding to grow incredible ventures through capital and connections. I'm your host, Michelle Beatty, professional development author and coach. Roshana, welcome to the Career Tipper podcast. Thank you so much. Uh, I know my introduction was a bit of a tongue tie, so I really appreciate you going through it all, but I'm really excited to be on the podcast today. Thank you. Thank you. Now, before we shift the conversation to sustainability of women-owned businesses, Roshana, please share with the listeners your amazing journey to enrich her that is rooted in mindfulness and vetted financial strategies. Well, that, that is a lot. So, I have been, um, I've had a relationship finance, with finances from a young age because my mother told me that all women had to be in control of their finances and in order to have freedom and, and do whatever I wanted in, in this world, I needed to understand what I was doing. So at a very young age, she uh, started taking me to investment club uh, meetings. So she was a uh, high school teacher, and the teachers at her high school, San Diego High School, um, had investment club meetings. So I would attend with my mother, and then uh, over a period of time, eventually she uh, allowed me to select all of the investment uh, decisions, and I started becoming more and more comfortable. And then when I decided that it was time for me to go to college, I said, hey, mom, I don't want you to worry about you know paying for me to go to college because I understand money, and I'm going to figure it out myself. So not only did I decide that uh, I would get the highest GPA possible, which fortunately I was valedictorian, also, I loved to perform and dance. I was also a cheerleading captain. So I loved performing, even though I was super shy. But I also decided to apply to over 200 scholarships. And based on those that application, I won over $600,000 that paid for my 11 years in college. So that paid for my three engineering degrees and you know my PhD in, in computer engineering and finance. So that allowed me to have a, a step ahead. And even when it was time for me to uh, purchase my first home, I listened to the financial advice of other people that I knew. So one of my friends um, told me that, hey, this is all you have to do to purchase a home. And luckily at that time, for me, the lending environment was kind of relaxed. You could actually buy a house before you started a job when I bought my first home. So I just had my offer letter and my a uh, real estate agent, she actually presented my story to the seller because I did not have the highest offer for my house. But she told them, hey, I want you to know about Roshana. And this is the person who will be in your home that you've loved and cared for. And this is this is her work ethic. This is what she's trying to do in this world. Like, you know, don't you want your home to be lived in by someone like her? And they said yes. And I actually was able to buy my first home a week before I started my job in, in D.C. Because, because of that. Now, I'm sure you can imagine based on my background that I'm a bit of a workaholic. 
And um, often in my life, I've suffered from I'll be happy when syndrome. And so I noticed it kept happening again and again. And the first time I wanted to get out of that cycle, I moved to Atlanta and it was still happening in Atlanta. And I said, you know what? I need to go and just focus on self-care first. So I decided to move to Thailand and um, study classic yoga. And classic yoga is more about meditation, uh, learning Sanskrit, uh, reciting mantras, learning the true meaning behind things. Um, And I did that for six weeks. And based on my training in Thailand, I was able to to actually become mindful. As I'm not perfect, and I I I sink back into I'll be happy when from time to time. But it really allowed me to see that we have all these all the resources that we need. Um, if and if we focus on gratitude practice, then we'll be much happier. And so. Uh, I came back to the U.S. and said, hey, I'm going to focus still on finance, but I want to pair that with mindfulness. So out of that, the wealthy yogi emerged. So wealthy yogi is still uh, how what I believe and how I try to navigate through life. Um, as I'm as I'm accomplishing my goals, and then fast forward. I feel like this is such a long story. Fast forward. Um, I really wanted to focus all of my skill sets on helping women be able to follow the path of their dreams, and so I found it enrich her, which its goal is to just disrupt the current status quo and provide the resources, funding and education so that women can run their own business, be in charge of their own economic footprint and thrive. Now, did you create the entire platform, Roshana, or just elements of it? So I am the founder and CEO of Enrich Her. And fortunately, fortunately for me, I have five team members um, uh, full-time and a lot of other people have helped along the way. So I am like the conductor. So my background, as mentioned, is in engineering and finance. So I designed the whole methodology and, you know, it's my vision is, is what you see, but definitely cannot do all of this alone. And so there are a lot of people who have helped along the way. Fantastic. And congratulations on everything that you've accomplished. It's an amazing, inspiring story. I'm sure for not only just me, but the listeners too. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Now, Enrich Her focuses on three areas. Um, and I like to chat about each one, starting with funding. And I know that you offer funding opportunities for the founders and for the funders. So can you just give us a snapshot of the process that you require founders and funders to complete? Yes. Yeah, so on the founder side, as long as a company has at least 25000 in revenue uh, in the course of the last year in business, they can qualify for some of our loan-based offerings. So we have uh, direct loans where people can fill out a standard application and get uh, money within 48 hours. Uh We also have our debt-based crowdfunding platform. And the debt-based crowdfunding platforms allows um, founders to raise money from the public. So we're all familiar with like Kickstarter or GoFundMe, which are donations. But these are loans. So you'll be able to repay the money that you borrow to the investors. What's great about this, a lot of people are tired of causes or a lot of businesses don't ring the heartstrings. So say if you're trying to build an algorithm to uh, uh, make shopping more efficient, that might not get donations. However, if you tell investors, hey, I'm going to repay you, they might be more, more likely to, to invest in you and, and give you that capital that you need. So the whole goal there is to provide an alternative framework so that women-led businesses can get the capital that we all need. 
And then on the um, funder side, funders uh, have the ability to invest directly in those loans. Um, anybody can invest on our platform, whether they're accredited or not accredited. And for those who don't know, accredited means that you're certified to be wealthy um, by the government's uh, uh, definition. So that's over 250000 and at least a, a million in assets. But our platform is allows for qualified um, investors, whether they be accredited or not accredited, to be able to invest in these uh, loans. In addition, for those who aren't in those um, revenue uh, targets or aren't interested in, in a loan right now, we are diligent about keeping a running list of all kinds of grants, pitch competitions, accelerator programs on our website. So there are over 300 opportunities there now. And I love that every week people are telling me, hey, we found out about this because of you. and We got this opportunity because of Enricher. So we are really trying to share the information with both founders and funders and provide a marketplace where these two can meet one another so that everyone can can thrive in the environment. Now, the second area of Enrich Her is the Spark community. And I understand it's a great opportunity to develop valuable connections. And I love your social media posts when you just picture all of the different women of all the different backgrounds. And each one has their unique story, which is so inspiring. And I know it seems like an adventure of discovery for many of them. So all who participates and attends the events has the opportunity to learn, you know, the expertise and skills to poise themselves to experience success as an economic driver. Can you tell them more about Spark and how it helps you and then also your perception of how it empowers the women? Yeah, so the the goal of Enricher Spark is to eliminate some of the silos that exist for women-led businesses and in different ecosystems. So in order to do that, we not only invite entrepreneurs at the idea stage and investors, but we also have successful, uh, quote-unquote, entrepreneurs, so women who built multi-million dollar media companies and PR companies and product companies, women who have gone through the ups and downs of entrepreneurships and organizations that support them. We also, uh, a lot of times when people think about women in business, they only think about women in this conservative suit. I hate those uh, stock photos where if a woman's a business, she has this boring suit on and she looks just like everybody else. But there are tons of businesses where that uniform does not apply. Women who own restaurants and tattoo, uh, you know, uh, establishments and horse ranches and construction companies, like all of them are welcome to be part of the Enricher ecosystem. And not only that, like people often assume that the resources are only for millennials and that's not the case. Like we really support women at all ages and at all stages of their journey. And our vision is that by bringing all of us together, we can better leverage um, each other's skill sets. And one of the things that I hate is that every time I ask someone, hey, do you know someone who's an expert in let's say video production? Everyone, male or female, always tells me the name of a male. There's nothing wrong with guys. I support them, do business with them. This, I'm not saying this to male bash, but I am saying this to say that a lot of times women aren't networking enough with one another, so they aren't top of mind when it comes to providing services that other businesses might need. So I really... Um, one of the, the ideas is is bringing all of these business owners together to say, hey, yeah, we can work with one another. We can help each other out or I can share this with you or you can help me with that. Um, in addition, Enricher Spark is a way to um, get capital to women entrepreneurs. So at some of our events, we have pitch competitions where we award uh, dollars to the winner. 
um, as we move forward, we'll have some of the women who are raising funds on our platform also pitch at those events. And we're really excited that we have um, some events coming up in D.C. and Atlanta pretty soon. So uh, we're just hoping that everyone leaves there like inspired with some connections and and with some inspiration to continue on their uh, path to success. You just made me think of Regina King at the um, Golden Globes recently and her announcement for her commitment to at least have 50% of her workforce be 50% women. Yes. Um, so you just made me think of that for some reason, just like ch- putting that challenge out there. Like it's, it's really important. I mean, and when I founded Enrich Her, every single person who wanted to join me was, was a man. And it's just, you know, they're just taught, go after what you want. Right. And a lot of times women want to analyze, research you. Do I like you? You know, <laughs> and still to this day, like men constantly, can I be part of your team? Can I do this and that? And yeah, but I'm really intentional about, you know, supporting women led businesses. That's what we're about. So I, when someone refers someone to me, Hey, I know this guy who can speak at your event. I was like, I always say, do you know any woman who can speak on that topic? And they think, and then they said, oh, yeah, there's this woman. And I was like, let's, let's go with her unless she thinks she's horrible. And let's, you know, move forward <laughs> from there because I don't want it to be the same. We have to be intentional about seeing what we want, you know, creating what we want to see in the world. That was a recent post for you, too, about you were tired of. Yeah, so that was a post. You do look at that <laughs> post. So there is a man who actually posted, hey, uh, I will, this is his voice, I will not accept speaking at any conference that doesn't have a single woman that's a speaker. And I shared his post on LinkedIn and say, like, I agree, I don't understand why this is so prevalent. But this is one of the reasons why. Men, uh, a lot of times, market and sell themselves a little bit more than women and so that really lends itself to being more top of mind so not everyone is just being sexist but uh some people are but not everyone is it's just the you know the top of mind uh uh thing that happens and so but we all have to be intentional about that and you know i'm friends with elizabeth gore and she actually contacts conference organizers all the time and say hey you need to have a woman figure it out, you know? So she tries to lean in on these conferences that have no women um, to say like, look, there are t- what is the expertise that you're looking for? Here's a list of, of several. And she, that's one of the things that she's like trying to change. So we have to do it. It takes the community to make that yeah. shift. So yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. The third area is Enrich Her Academy, which focuses on closing the learning gap for the vastly underserved women-led business community. So please let us know about that and um, the virtual and live incubator and the courses that you offer. Yeah, so uh, all of us need a little help no matter what stage of business we're in. So we've had courses in the past from how do you bootstrap your business to how do you become investor ready? So how do you pitch to different demographics? Um, what are the legal uh, items that you need for your startup? So we have a variety of courses that we have have shared with the community in the past. Um, moving forward, the courses will be a part of our Enrich Her online community so people can uh, learn um, on demand whatever topic uh, interests them. And the goal is for people to, to, to feel prepared. So when I first got into uh, the funding space, I didn't know like what cap table meant or um, what was even accredited, non-accredited. I'm like, what are they talking about? Like there are all these terms that people just throw around and they assume that you know what they're talking about. And we all want to be prepared, you know, especially being, you know, the new majority that we are. We want to be prepared when we're going into any room, whether we're looking for investment capital or not, just just as business owners. So 
all of those types of topics are part of our Enrich Her Academy. Now I have another question, artificial intelligence. What do you want your community to know or embrace or research or make sure they're aware when it comes to artificial intelligence and how their business fits and who they hire in regards to that? Because that's like on the rise and there are many people that are very in tune to it, but there are some that are not, maybe it's just not on the radar. It could be a little fear or just not interested in it. But what are your thoughts on that? So, so I actually focused on artificial intelligence in school. So that was my favorite thing. Okay. So (laughs) artificial, artificial intelligence, uh, basically are, algorithms that use data to try to figure out what you're going to do. Like, so they use that to predict. The problem is that a lot of companies aren't using inclusive data. So even in the banking industry, like hardly any research, well, I would say almost zero research on payback and the profile of a, of a person that is a lending candidate included women. Right. And so all of the um, questions that are asked are really geared towards men in the current uh, lending environment. However, women are more likely to repay a loan. Women pay, are more likely to pay bills on time. Women um, uh, build more successful companies, yet none of this data is integrated into the current model. So what an AI approach would be, and this is the approach we're using with our company with Enrich Her Funding, is looking at the attributes that women have and pairing that with some of the traditional information to create a better a better algorithm. Now what you see in the news is that, hey, this facial recognition um, system couldn't pick out a black person, right? because they, they didn't use any black data to train it. And that's what we see over and over again. So most of the people who run companies in the world <laughs> um, who are in charge of deciding what products are in the marketplace are not the people that are the consumers or not the people that they're trying to represent. So that's one of the reasons that we and at Richer are entering the marketplace in this way. And, 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 and so because a lot of people don't think outside of who they are, they forget to <laughs> include data that's not about them when creating these AI models. So that's what you get. You once shared that your grandmother encouraged you to edit your dream because the world is not hospitable to ambitious women. And you went on to share that you didn't take offense, but used it as motivational baseline to help women qualify for financial sources in the venture space. So what do you advise women and entrepreneurs to do when they encounter similar roadblocks through business interactions or their own self-doubts? It's funny because I was just listening to, what is it, Two Dope Queens, their interview with Michelle Obama before Mm -hmm. speaking with you. And Michelle Obama was talking like about how she asked this whole room of super successful people, have you been told you can do something? And 100 percent of of the women said yes. Um, It's hard for us to, to know as we're growing up that an adult doesn't necessarily know everything or our peer or someone in charge doesn't really know everything. We have to like come to our own understanding of self. Um, and that's part of like the growing up process and, and figure out on our own what we can and cannot do. Um, I remember (laughs) like being in, junior high or high school when I realized that a teacher like made up a lie about me. And I was like, I didn't think adults lied. Like, I was like, what's going on? (laughs) It like blew my mind, right? That people didn't, uh, you know, say things that were factual all the time. So I always thought if someone said, hey, you can't do this or you need to do that, that that was a fact. But as adults now, we know that that is not the case. And so it's always good to like recenter and, and that's really when, you know, mindfulness practice 
and being by yourself really helps. So being by yourself without TV, without social media, and just reflect on what you, what your personal journey is, what you should be doing, you know, in this world and then figure it out. Sometimes you win and sometimes you don't, but it's all just part of the journey. So it's funny because like I'm super sensitive <laughs> and I cry a lot, but like I also have a lot of courage. So a lot of times I get, I'll get a fan. I'm like, why does he think that about me? And I'm like, whatever. <laughs> I can do anything, right? Mm -hmm. But it sometimes takes me a while. I have to deal with my feelings <laughs> first. And then and then I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna do this and that. You know, just like um before founding Enrich Her, I was told I was too old because everyone, all the like fame most of the famous people, so that we believe. We believe that most of the famous people who start businesses are 25, right? And I'm older than that. However, we've all seen these articles about when, you know, all these other founders started their companies. But I was told I was too old. And I actually waited a whole, like, year before deciding, you know what? Who cares? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, there's no, like, definition. <laughs> Who created the rule you have to be a certain age to do anything, right? So I said, you know... I'm this age, but I still want to be a startup founder and I'm going to do it. So, 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 you know, and, and that's what it is. So with me, it's just that I don't want to disappoint myself and not try something that I wanted to do. So my process is to figure out what is important to me and then make sure that I set my own terms of when, what I'm going to do about that, you know? Mm-hmm. So. I and everyone kind of just follows suit. <laughs> yes. I love it. Now, Roshana, does Enrich Her offer grant opportunities? Yes. So we have tons of grants and accelerators and stuff that we share uh, that from other organizations. And then we also have a grant fund as well. So at most of our conferences, we've given away grant dollars to um an entrepreneur that participated. And so that is in alignment with what we're trying to do as we move forward. Fantastic. Now through your many successful business ventures, cause you've had some amazing ventures so far, and I'm sure there's some more going to come up along the way. What have you learned most about being committed to keeping your finance and technology skills recharged to consistently blaze trails for other women entrepreneurs or just yourself? Um, <laughs> really, it's funny that the, the most important thing is marketing, which I didn't, <laughs> I didn't realize. So a lot of the technology skills and organizational skills that I have are applied to creating marketing type auto, uh, automation. So there are so many ways that we could touch people these days from all the social media platforms to email to, uh, you know, events and all this kind of stuff. And we have to make sure that all of those touch points are integrated with whatever kind of business that we have, whether it's a technology based business or not. Um, in terms of like just technology, pure technology, it's, I just love learning new things. So I always, try to figure, you know, allocate some time to, to figuring something new out. And, you know, but that's, that's just me. <laughs> I get it. Now, when building and growing an ecosystem, what short term and long term perspectives and strategies do you encourage the founders and the funders to keep in mind when establishing their ventures? I know you have some lessons to share. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so it takes time to, to build in um, certain cities. However, you don't have to follow a formula, right? Um, when I um, moved from Atlanta to D.C. last year, I said, hey, I want to be up and running in this ecosystem really quickly. So my strategy was to figure out who are all the ecosystem builders in the city and be around them and connect with them. And I was able to, to create this ecosystem really quickly. However, to, to have a, a, a long standing ecosystem, you have to do a lot of work to make sure you're constantly, you know, reaching out to key players, um, figuring out who's, 
who are new, welcoming new people. So you have to have this this system and process in place to, to stay relevant. Um, um, but in all, all in all, you can't take anything too, too seriously. I used to be with my workaholic type A stuff. I used to have specific lists of like these 29 things that I had to do to achieve anything. Right. And I've learned that yes, those kinds of things work, but that's only willpower. Right. There's this other thing that's called that's magnetism, energy, connectivity that can extend beyond willpower. And you have to use a, a, a lot of that if you want to be fluid in your approach to to ecosystems and to other things in life. So I've really had to um, touch that side of life as well to be able to uh, manage all these things that I'm, that I'm doing. Thank you for sharing. Now, what's next for Enrich Her? Well, our goal is to help 100 women-led businesses get debt-based capital this year. So we definitely encourage any woman who has over 25000 in revenue over the last year to apply at iEnrichHer.com slash apply. So that is our next milestone. And once we hit 100, the next goal is 1,000. And we want to everyone to know about us, so us to be a, a household name. So when people hear, hey, how do I get funding for my business? They hear Enrich Her. Fantastic. And I will definitely promote that within Career Tipper as well, because I think that's fantastic. I really do. Roshana, please finish these sentences. A strong, productive mindset is? Flexible. Your favorite snack is? Popcorn. Oh, okay. Do you put anything on your popcorn? Yes. Yeah, so I love uh, coconut oil, cumin, salt and pepper. Oh, okay. Yep. And the time snatcher you aim to avoid most? Is stress. I hear you. <laughs> and my hype song is? So there's a couple, and these are all about entrepreneurship. So, <laughs> so okay, Ace Hood, Hustle Hard, <laughs> um, mid Beyonce. <laughs> there's a couple Beyonce songs, um, you know, Formation and, and uh, Girls Around the World. I love those. But I have this whole list that are all about people talking about, you know, I work hard in whatever way. So yep. motivation comes yep. in all forms. <laughs> now, Roshana, I appreciate you being a guest on the Career Tipper podcast. Please share your favorite quote or affirmation that keeps you creating career tipping moments. So I love to say, you know, I wish you love. I wish you health and peace. And I say that to myself and others. So that helps me uh, stay centered. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how can the listeners keep in touch with you? Yeah, so you can keep in touch with Enrich Her by going to iEnrichHer.com. You can also find us at iEnrichHer on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. So pretty much I Enrich Her everywhere. Um, we send out newsletters every week, funding opportunities every week. So feel free to sign up for that as well. And um, come find us. That, that's really it. <laughs> Fantastic. And you can find me, Michelle Beatty, at careertipper.com and on Facebook and Instagram at careertipper and on Twitter at careertipper1. Please listen and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher Radio. If you enjoyed this episode or any other episode, please leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Career Tipper Podcast. We're grateful for our listeners and guests. For more resources about how to evolve to your professional best, share your comments and feedback about this episode and your suggestions for future guests, visit careertipper.com. Until next time, be confidently you.